first world order radio final lead final lead we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio we get on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have an activated pilot man in which I produced this black chemical called melody. He's back once again. First of all, the radio. Tonight is Moore's Holy Temple of Science of the World meeting. And what we're going to do is get into the seven universal principles of Tahuti. Before we do, let me call on my co host and bring him on in. Brother Fahim, are you here? Greetings, brother. Peace. Peace and love. Peace, peace. Islam, how you doing tonight? Wonderful, wonderful. How you doing, brother? I'm doing well, doing well. All right. Beautiful. We're going to get into um, the seven universal principles of Tahuti. First, we want to break down who is Tahuti. The Greek termination uh, terminology is thought, in which that we get the word thought from. Now, Tahuti um, symbols was that of an ipis bird that was the beak, in which that was symbolic to a pen, in which that he was the writer of the good and bad deeds of the gods. Um, in which that is symbolic to, um, in which that is um, based on, in which that is based on um, the writings. Um, or as within Islam, we would say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa to the right, and then we turn to the left, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa So as we sat in Jalsa, which is sit in position, we would turn our head to the right and to the left and salam our angels, in which they record our good and bad deeds. Um, Tahuti symbolizes um, the writer of these particular deeds, in which that is symbolic to the cerebrum, the two cerebrums or cherubim portions of our brain, which are the angelical portions of our brain, um, in which that um, writes down our good and bad deeds, as we would say. Also, Tahuti symbolizes another aspect of the brain, which is the medulla oblongata, in which that when you go to um, Hebrew, you would see the word gop, um, which is spelled Q-O-F, in which that gop is a symbol which um, means monkey, it means consciousness, and being that um, Tahuti, other symbol, besides for the ibis bird, is that of a baboon, which is a monkey. And so this monkey symbolizes 
a form of consciousness, all right? And also it symbolizes an ape or a skull. It also means copy, as in monkey do, monkey, monkey see, monkey do. So that copying sense of our brain in which that bestows consciousness or our past life or our photographic memories or memories um, is actually the medulla oblongata, in which that sits under the cerebrum. <clears throat> so it symbolizes um, these various sections of the brain, or consciousness is also thought. So hence, Tahuti symbolizes these particular aspects. So it was not an actual man walking around with the head of an ibis bird, as some uh, may believe. It was an allegory. All right, once again, the bird was symbolic to the beak um, as a pen, all right? Um, and he being the recorder. Also, another name was uh, Makaru, in which that um, symbolizes the word, or as we were saying in the Bible, the word made flesh. So he also was another aspect of Jesus, all right? Um, so... In this particular aspect, he also was an aspect of Moses. When Moses uh, went before God and, and told God, well, I do not speak eloquently enough, but yet the next scene, um, he's there talking to Pharaoh, talking about let my people go, as we played in the beginning. Um, so all of this is connected, all right? Um, so that's what Tahuti symbolizes. And there's principles in which that go along with Tahuti. Tahuti had 42 books, which was called the Emerald Tablets. His wife had 42 um, netters or gods, all right? We'll get into that in a second. But let's continue with Tahuti right now. And his wife, for those who don't know, his con his counterpart, uh, um, or con um, co-host, uh, as we would say, uh, is, uh, will be uh, Mayat, all right? And she has seven principles also. Um, but we're going to deal with his seven principles right now, in which that if you get the book Sacred Science by John Bain or the Three Initiates, which is called the Kabbalion, or Ancient Future by Wayne Chandler, it speaks about these seven principles. And the first principle is the principle of mentalism. The all is mine and everything in the universe is mental. All right? Now, um, this principle embodies the truth that the all is mine and explains that the all, you know, which is basically what we call reality and is underlying, you know, all the outward manifestations and appearances, which we know under the term of the material universe, the phenomena of life, matter, energy, and in short, all that is apparent to our material senses. That's what it symbolizes when to my all. And all is spirit, which is in itself is unknowable. Now, spirit, in order to tap into it, remember, breath is spirit. Spirit is breath, one and the same, all right? This is the vapor, the ghost, in which that, that's what it says in the scriptures that Jesus gave up the ghost, um, somebody that he took his last exhalation, because on death, or at death, you breathe out. Uh, when you come into this world, you breathe in, you take a inhalation, and as you leave out, you take an exhalation, so you give up the ghost, as they would say, but it's which is itself is unknowable and undefinable, um as most would say actually is knowable, we would call it vapor, we would call it the various states of ether, you have solid liquid and gas, which you are taught about in school on a daily basis, um from kindergarten to college. But you do not know about um, light ether, light chemical ether, life ether, light ether, or mental or thought ether. You're not taught for higher aspects of ether, all right? But which may be considered and thought of as a universal, infinite living mind. So we say that the living mind, this is the mind of God which is similar to the principles of mentalism. Your mind is a microcosm of the macrocosm. So yours, your mind is the miniature or 
the smaller version of the gigantic version, which is the universe itself. All right, next we have the principle of correspondence, which is basically as above, so below, as within, so without. Um, of course, this principle embodies the truth that is always um, a correspondence between the laws and the phenomena of um, the various planes of beings and life. Um, the old um, Hermetica um, axiom runs in these words, as above, so below, as within, so without, but it says that that there's a grasping of this principle give one the meaning of solving many a dark paradox and hidden secrets of nature. This is why we always say, if you don't apply this in your research, as you're seeking, as you're studying, you have to apply as above, so below, as within, so without, to have those correspondence. That's the way, this is how you give the most phenomenal information to the people so they can uplift themselves. These are planes beyond our knowing or beyond the average person knowing. You know, the average person only uses 10% of their brain. Um, the more you activate through the breath, the holy breath, the more you breathe in, um, the more you take in chi, prana, chi, mana, kuhana, uh, whatever term you want to refer to as holy spirit, um, or you take this life force energy, the more you are able to go beyond um, the average foresight of the average person. But when we apply the principle of correspondence to them, we are able to understand much more than we would otherwise be unknowable to us. So this principle of the universal application and manifestation or is actually is on the plane, various planes of the material, mental, emotional, and spiritual universe. It is a spirit universal law. All right. And of course, this all corresponds to um Newton's um one oh one, the Newton's law that um, energy cannot be destroyed, just simply transform, all right? And this correlates to our third principle, which is the principle of vibration, which basically tells you nothing rests. There is no such thing as inertia, all right? And which that Dave was telling us in physics class. Because when you get to quantum physics, they'll tell you that it doesn't exist. There is no such thing as anything resting. Everything moves. Everything vibrates. All right. This principle embodies the truth that everything is in motion. Everything vibrates. Nothing is at rest. Fact which modern science endorses now in quantum physics, and which that um, new scientific discoveries tends to verify. And yet, this hermetic principle was um, was spoken of thousands of years ago by the masters of ancient Egypt. And this principle explains that the differences between the different um, manifestations of matter energy, mind, and even spirit results largely from various rates of vibration from the all, which is pure spirit, um, down to the grossest form of matter. You know, hence, this is where we get E equal MC square, or what they call the theory of relativity by Einstein, um, energy equal mass per constant speed of light. So mass can, so mass can become energy, energy can become mass. So and because all is vibrating, the higher the vibration, the higher the position in the scale. All right, so um, another principle, of course, is the fourth principle, which is the principle of polarity. Everything is dual or duality. Everything has its pole. Everything has its um, pair of opposites. Like and unlikes are the same. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degrees, extremes, um, needs. This is where um, you get the paradoxes within your scriptures, whether it's and Abel, whether it's Jesus and Judas, whether it's Lucifer and Christ, whether it's the devil and God, whether it's Heru and Set, whether it's Inky and Enlil, all of this symbolizes the same. Okay? Everything has its two poles. Everything has its pairs of opposites. And this is the old paradox that has perplexed so many, which has been stated as the follows, that thesis and antithesis are identical in nature, but different in degrees. The opposites are the same, different only in degrees. The pair of opposites may be reconciled or reconciled. Extremes meet. Everything is and isn't at the same time. Or truth or but half-truths. 
and every truth is half false. There are two sides to everything, et cetera, et cetera. It explains in everything that there are two poles, the opposite aspects, and the opposites are really only two extremes. And actually, they can be complementary, just like man and woman are complementary, but they appear to be opposite aspects. Okay, so um, this ends the debate with um, this devil and God thing, in which that we're always fussing about you know, the lower and higher nature, when actually it is um, the same. It's just simply degrees, you know, right? You also have um, the principle of rhythm, which is the fifth principle, in which that everything flows out and in. Everything has a tide. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swings manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates, all right? So the principle um, embodies the truth that in everything there is manifest a measure motion to and fro, a flow and an inflow, a swing backwards and forward, a pendulum-like movement, a tide-like ebb and flow, a high tide and a low tide between the two poles which exist in accordance with the principle of polarity described a moment ago. There is always an action and a reaction, an advance and a retreat or recoil, a rising and a sinking. This is the affair of the universe, suns, worlds, men, animals, mind, energy, and matter all go through it. All right, so this law is manifesting the creation and destruction of worlds and the rise and the fall of nations in the life of all things. And finally, in the mental state of man, as it is with the latter, that the Hermetics finds the understanding of the principle most important. All right? Now, you have the sixth principle, which is karma, which is also referred to cause and effect. What goes around comes around. You read what you sow. Everything has, um, every cause has an effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happened according to law. Chance is not but a name for law, not recognized. That's all chance is, is. Is but a law not recognized. There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes the law. All right? So this principle embodies the fact that there is a cause for every effect and the effect for every cause. It explains that everything happens according to law. In other words, there's no such thing as a coincidence. Nothing else merely happens. And there is no such thing as chance that while there are various planes of cause and effects, the higher dominate the lower planes, still nothing ever escapes entirely from the law. All right? And this is um, a misconception for those who practice low magic or what has became known as black magic, believing that they can bypass the laws and you cannot. This is also the seventh principle, which is the principle of gender, which is sex. Gender is everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principle. Gender manifests on all planes. All right? This is um, true not only to the physical plane, but to the mental, even the spiritual plane. On the physical plane, the principle manifests as sex. On the higher planes, it takes on higher forms, but the principle is still is ever the same. No creation, physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual is possible without this principle, all right? An understanding of its laws would throw light on many subjects that perplex the minds of men. Now, the principle of gender works ever in the direction of generations, regeneration, and creation, all right? Everything and every person contains the two elements or principles or the or this principle within um, him or her. All right. And you all can definitely go through your research on these um, various subjects, you know. Um, but before we go any further, let me bring back on Brother L. Brother yes, Brother Biden? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you have anything yes, you want to add to that? 
Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm saying about polarity and dealing with it uh, as above, so below, and dealing with the uh, Christian prayer as it is in heaven as it is on earth. Uh, uh, that is uh, very correct. And dealing with uh, karma law as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I said, what goes around comes around. Right. Comes around. Uh, also, Dealing with, I noticed something about the Scottish Rite, uh, the, the, the two eagles, uh, two headed right. eagle, that also represents polarity as well. Right. Uh, uh, also represents the uh, 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 the prayer you just talked about earlier. Uh, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad, and Rasulullah, uh, that they uh, faces the left and faces the right. So that also right. represents that. Uh, most right. nations are not aware of. Uh, uh, they, right. they, they, they say that's that's at the, east and west. Right, and that's at the 33rd degree. That's the symbol huh. for the 33rd degree. Yes. Uh-huh. Right, in which that is also the symbol of um, Herod um, and Marquette, or Marquette, which is the Sphinx, in which that is the lord of the east and west, of the two um, horizons. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Wow, okay. Yeah, Uh is, uh, uh, used, and we know the Sphinx was used in order to initiate um, um, the ancient seekers. Right. That was the place of initiation. Mm-hmm. That came there to seek knowledge. Right. Yes. Uh, also, uh, dealing with uh, 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 with the uh, 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 what was I going to say? I'm blanking my lost that train of thought already. Uh, you don't get it back. Uh, man, get ready to say something. Um, uh, uh, boy, uh, dealing with uh, oh yes, yeah. uh, dealing with the uh, like you was also talking about uh, man and beast. Uh, like you see these uh, uh, uh pictures of the man of a horse with a man's head, and a lot of people think how grotesque picture it is, and it is a grotesque picture, I have to admit, but uh, they missed the whole meaning, the symbolic meaning of that. It's a meaning, mm-hmm. They're talking about just this lower self and this higher self. Right. That's, that's what that, actually that represents. Mm-hmm. You see a lot of your so-called Greek mythologies and uh, uh, and so on, you know, uh, dealing with part of the Jesus we're going into Jerusalem and he's riding the ass. And all he was being in control of his lower nature. Because exactly. he had to be in control of his lower nature to go into the same as in, Or as in masonry, you ride the goat. Exactly. In which that we know that the goat in the Old Testament was called the scapegoat because the priests of the Levite priests would actually put their hands on every jubilee or every 50 years or every 49 years as they worked into the every 50 years um, jubilee, they would actually put their hands on the goat and take their sins of the people in the village. Still there? Yeah, we lost each other, brother. I don't know what happened. Right. I don't know what happened either, bro. Okay. Um, but I was saying that the um, goat symbolized not just Capricorn, the zodiac sign, as you know, as Baphomet, which is a sign of the devil, mm-hmm. or the fifteenth card in the tarot deck, which is, um, you know, the devil card. But it also symbolizes, um, you mastering your lower self. That's that's what it symbolizes within masonry is riding a goat. It symbolizes the same as Jesus riding a donkey, you know, right. a mule through. Um, Jerusalem, or Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Yes, and dealing with also uh, with the uh, uh, also with polarity. When you uh, spoke earlier about uh, the devil and God, all you were saying was a lot of people will say, and, uh, especially Christians, and if I say there's no devil in God. But they will misinterpret that entirely, you know. And what you, what you mean is talking about the lower nature of man, of the God man. 
Exactly. The God, the God, him, the, him, he, the God, and his Lord. And that's the devil. Which is right. both uh, polarity and both, you know, uh, esoteric, esoteric meaning of uh, dealing with Haru, uh, Asar, Asad, and Haru. Uh, they say it in Greek, Osiris, Horus, Osiris, and, and I mean, Osiris, uh, uh, Isis, and Hor- Horus. Uh, all it was that Haru was rising uh, back to, to uh, higher nature when he, right. um, he conquered Set, which mm-hmm. said, uh, which is the sunset. Which is the ruler of darkness, where the sun sets in the west, and where darkness begins. Uh, it was the war between light and day, and day and night. Right. <coughs> See who's going to conquer who. I was watching the uh, uh, the Matrix today, the Revolution, and how he was fighting this man, and this man had uh, thrown uh, a shoved a light bulb in his face. Uh, right. Which he had blind both of his eyes, and uh, in the movie, most of the vast majority of people would would, would really that would go over their heads, because what they are talking about one when, when uh, Haru was battling set, and was set put punched much his eyes out, he blinded himself to reason and exactly. to see the truth. That was exactly. symbolic of the rich of, of the uh, comedic mysteries. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And therefore, he went down to his lower nature, you know, to he regain his higher self again. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Jesus when he died, put him in the tomb three days, and then when he raised, he, yeah, he rose above the dead. Yeah, he rose above the morally, spiritually, and mentally dead, and rose when he ascended to his higher self, to the spiritual world. Right. It's, uh, 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 this, uh, so much about the Bible that uh, most of people in the church really don't understand, and it deals with a lot of polarity and uh, 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 polarity and uh, opposites, law of opposites. It deals with karma. It deals with everything we always talk about every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday nights. That's right. Yeah, you know. And like I said, um, being that we um, made mention of those seven principles of um, Taori, we have to get into the seven principles of Mayat. Mayat has seven principles, which is truth, balance, harmony, justice, love, order, and propriety. Now, what's interesting is that Mayat is truth and it's based upon perception. Mayat is balanced and is limited by the mind. Mayat is holy and becomes what attention is focused on. Mayat is justice and doing what is right right now. Mayat is love and love is exchange. Love is order and not coincidence. Mayat is the right propriety and doing what is relevant. Mm-hmm. Um, this calling to my husband's seven universal principles a consort principles called Taori. Kind of, kind of, kind of drown it out, brother. Right, and as you can see that these codes or laws are ideal pools that speak to each individual based upon his or her knowledge and maturity. Mm-hmm. All right, these codes or laws are based upon one's maturity allows one to create the type of life they want, providing it is according with my yacht. As the principles of gravity, um, they will never change and will continue to assist if you have studied another system, you will find that these codes and laws cause out the principle of that system as well. So, for example, if you go and study Buddhism, you can see within the eight-fold path of Buddhism, you can see the laws. If you study Taoism, you can see the same. So, asterism, you can see the same. Um, so, this laws are told over and over again because these laws expand it out to the diaspora. And in particular, the Christians have it as the Ten Commandments. You know, um, we, Christians have it as, um, as a particular more, we have it as the five principles love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I still can't hardly hear you. It's starting to drown it out for some reason. Okay. Um, can you hear me now, brother? Yes, I'm loud and clear. All right. So, as we were saying, that Mayat, 
um, hopefully um, it picks up this time. Mayad is true and is based upon perception. Mayad is balance and it is limited by the mind. Mayad is harmony and becomes what attention is focused on. Mayad is justice and doing what is right right now. That is love and love is exchange. In other words, love is reciprocal, um, is a give and take situation. All right. Mayat is order and not coincidence. All right. Mayat is propriety and doing what is relevant, you know what I'm saying, in life and conducting yourself um, in these ways at all times or as much as possible. All right. So um, that's what, you know, Mayat, like I said, when you read her laws, they correlate perfectly with the seven laws of Tahuti, you know, mm-hmm. which that some that was who her husband was. Um, that was the that was the that was a marriage, um, in which that they in which they were speaking about the marriage of laws, universal mm-hmm. laws and cardinal laws, earthly laws. Mayat law symbolizes how to conduct yourself on earth, and Tahuti law symbolizes how to conduct yourself universally. All right, so that's what that was symbolic to. And of course, we yeah. know that Mayat um, is oftentimes depicted as a woman wearing a feather on her head. And that feather symbolizes mind, which is the powerful force of the light, and the feather that will be stored as a rock, which is the foundation of the universe, as indicated by the new age. You know? Okay. Still, yeah, still drowning out. <laughs> yeah, that's your phone, brother. It's my phone? Yeah, that's your phone. Oh, okay. I better get on it then. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing a um a loud noise in the background from your phone. Okay, what does it sound like? Just a loud noise, just just um like like air echo. Okay, because there's there's no there's no noise in here. Um, I don't know what that could be. Uh, boy, so I hear that. Okay, right, right it's static on it's static on your line. Okay. But um, as I was saying, um, the foundation of both these particular laws are symbolic to the Uranus, which is the serpent that emerges from the third eye, um, which is right above the um, two um, eyebrows. All right. So um, when you compare these seven laws of Mayat with the 42 declarations, um, called the 42 laws of Mayat or the 42 negative confessions, um, which is from the Perhem Heru, which is the um, Egyptian book of the dead. Book of the Sun, Day, and Book of Moon, Night, all right, or Shadow, you know, if you want to call it like that. Okay. Um, you know, that's that's the way that we can actually look at it. And of course, um, you know, like we said, from the Bible itself, it's just a thing that we have called the Holy Video or the Sun Book, you know. Okay. All right. So, um, we see that's what this is actually coming from as far as these particular connection pieces. This information is very um, necessary when we break down um, Mayat and Tahuti and what they symbolize. They symbolize right conduct um, within the various areas of the brain. And if the brain is deficient, um, then the mind is deficient. You know, of um, these because the mind uses the brain, and this chemical responses or messengers or messengers of um, codes in which that is um, produced from the brain, in which that helps with hormonal balance, which is my yacht throughout the whole system, the balance of the endocrine gland system, your pineal gland, pituitary gland hypothalamus gland, your your thyroid and parathyroid glands, your spleen, your pancreas, your thymus gland, um, you know, um, the testes and the prostate, the uterus and the ovaries, you know, it helps with all of these um, ductless glands, as they say, hormonal balance. That's my yacht. And so when you're in sync with my yacht, um, then you're able to carry out justice properly. However, if you lack, um, if you get the book, um, Melanin, 
Jackson, right? Written by Carol Barnes. Um, he states in there that melanin is actually the key to justice, meaning that without those who lack melanin, seemingly lack justice, lack my yachts, because they're always out of balance, because um, the ones in which that has melanin are coming more in the image of the universal um, order of things. You know, right? You have dark matter, you have black energy, um, which is called melanin, actually, external melanin, in which that is the glue in which that holds the universe together. And then you have the incarnation of these elements in a human form, which is the so-called I.E. more or the black body of the divine. So um, this is the reason why when we do um, things out of order, it comes back to us even quicker than those in which that do not or seemingly lack um, substantial amount of melanin. It seems as if karma takes a longer time to come back upon them. Um, and seemingly you might be right based on that because melanin is the draw or the attraction of ideas, of principles, of spirits, of concepts. All of these things are drawn to us based on the vibrational rate that we operate at at any given time, all right? Um, so we have to be aware of these principles. Um, I don't think there's too much more in which that we can say concerning um, Tahuti and Mayai and what they seemingly represent. Of course, there's always something. But, um, you know, we know that when you go and do your research, there's some more books in which that we would say to read, like the um, Yushia, in which that was um, translated by um, trans. It was translated by um, uh, brother, um, the brother who put together the Kwanzaa celebration, all right, um, Karinga, Brother Karinga, um, he did the Yushia, also Pata, the book of Pata, the oldest book in the world, um, is another book that you would want to get your hands on, um, in which that deals with this information, and that was um, done by um, Nia and Larry, um, and also um, one of the top um, scholars, actually, you know, who put together, uh, who put together, I guess you can say, uh, who brought this information, this, this, these particular books to the forefront, you know, um, he was a Boulay member, but uh, he did a lot of good. A lot of good um, with getting this information out to the people. I know a lot of this Afrocentristic books um, is was my beginning stages of consciousness. Was reading about who I was, you know, and uh, you know. Um, so there's a lot of good books. All right, another good book is Now Valley Contribution to Civilization by Anthony T. Broder. All right. Um, you can also get his Broder files, which is 22 essays, all right? So a lot of good books, basic books, Ancient Future, like you said earlier, by Wayne Chandler, all right? In which that helps with these particular concepts. All right, so... Let's get into um, more of the esoteric science because uh, the number seven, you know, has a special meaning. Of course, we know that the number seven um, symbolizes the seven chakras. And, you know, there's seven principles of Hudi, seven principles of Mayat. And obviously, 
um, it symbolizes the correlation or the balance of the two of these seven particular endocrine glands or Elohim, or the seven eyes of of God, known also as the seven souls of Ra, or whatever you want to refer to. All right, the number seven also relates to inner knowledge, and this inner knowledge or insight is one of the principles that corresponds to Ma. All right, which symbolizes the eye for inner sight. You know, so we have to understand um, that particular principle because when you read Matthew six twenty two, it says, "When your eye be single, your whole body will be filled with light." And it's in red, and allegedly Jesus said it. You know, that's what the Christians say. So. Um, you know, so we're going to try to go back to the phone line and get Brother L's perspective and see if we can get this information cleared up here. All right. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we hear you good. Okay. Yeah, did were you able to hear anything I said, Brother? Yeah, I heard everything you said. You said. Okay. All right. So, um, any comments on anything that we was talking about? Sure. Uh, dealing with the uh, seven uh, principles of Tahuti. Uh, Tahuti, in, in, in the Greek term, is uh, uh, Hermes Tres uh, uh, Vitas. Uh, right. Hermes Tres That's right. Exactly. And, and, and you know, uh, a lot of people are dealing with the, uh, uh, the Hermes, you know, the Hermes tradition, you know, but a lot of them don't know. Even some of your most uh, uh, so-called scholars uh, who don't know it go dates all the way back to Tahuti, right? The ancient Kemetic uh, mysteries, and also, like you said, the seven dealing with also with the seven chakras and uh, the seven uh, 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 senses. Uh, no, 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 no. The seven. Uh, uh, after seven years, we uh, uh, start in a new form again in our bodies. Uh, uh, Fourteen, we start at the age, well, uh, the age of puberty and things like that. Our body takes on a new cycle every seven years, uh, the seven days of creation, uh, like I said, the seven openings of the head, you know, the two nostrils and the, the two openings of the ear, of two ears, the mouth, and uh, uh, you know the two eyes, you know that's seven. Uh, you know it's it's, it's no uh, uh, really there's really no mystery or secret about it if you really study and study with the like books like my Aunt Ashby's books, uh, books like uh, Wayne Chandler's books, uh, and so on. You know, and uh, you really get the grasp of what we be talking about on 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 the Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night shows. I'm, talk, I'm speaking actually to the audience that's out there, you know, those that do not really can really hardly grab what we're talking about. But that's what we talk about mainly: the seven days of creation, uh, uh, the circle seven on the uh, holy book, the holy color iron of the uh, Moorish uh, Temple of Science. Uh, the, uh, you know, the seven principles of uh, Mayat, uh, and so on. Exactly. Yeah. And um you can go to a commercial right quick, Brother Al. Okay. Final lead. Final lead. We are on the air. No doubt. Thank you. 
25 times, time, three times a day at the back of the head and score that area in which that give you a photographic memory and give you access to your past lives. So you're born with your Akashic record, personal Akashic records. However, um, you're denied access um, based on your conscious level. All right? And we know that you know, the whole thing comes about, you know, we see the deceased scribe standing before his own heart or soul, the ka, on the scale, or which is actually the spirit, is on the scale of my eye. And on the opposite side is the goddess, um, the feather of truth, which is actually shu, which is symbolic to the breath, all right, um, which we say is um, the holy um, spirit or the holy soul, all right, or the holy breath. Um, the head of the goddess Maya is depicted above the scales of justice. Thorf is also known by another name, which is Tahuti, and standing there holding the tablet and the writing tool to record the results from the scale. And the Ibis head um, Tahuti is the patron saint of Maya scribes and priests. So this is how it's all connected. And when you read um, Wallace E. Budge's book, um, the book of coming forth by day, which is misnomer, the book of the dead, um, he speaks about these particular um, ceremonies um, taking place. <clears throat> okay, then. Well, I say all I can say is uh, peace and love to everybody in the chat room. But Arlene, Kadira, and until next time, we'll do it again. No doubt. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories, shit that works.